It's been two weeks since our last meeting on the 19th of April, and that is the time period that my report will refer to. Over spring break, we started the replacement of the curtain wall and windows in the high school 1972 wing. Uh, we were able to get to three of the five sections, and we completed two of the three that we started. So we're working on finishing the third one that we started and planning um, a schedule for the remaining two. Uh, so our teachers are quite happy with our improvements in that area. The district DEIA committee met for its fourth session. Uh, we have the participants working in self-selected strategy groups. Each group is working on providing advice on the advancement of the strategic plan strategy as it relates to DEIA. So the teams were encouraged to think about the strategy and, re and recommended action plans in light of the fact that the plan was developed um, and written in 2019, so before the pandemic, obviously, um, and consider the changes that have taken place in our world and in our schools um, since then and reflect on that. Um, we are moving the groups to try to consider big, picker, big picture, excuse me, big picture recommendations um, that we can um, look at as a district in terms of moving the work of the strategic plan forward in light of the DEIA work for the district. On April 20th, our uh, Technology and Innovation Committee uh, met. The meetings are facilitated by Dr. Faggio, who's gonna provide us with an update. Good evening. So on April 20th, the committee met and in attendance, we had Angela Vella representing the board. Thank you for your involvement in attendance. And our work with the committee has really been around the digital curriculum evaluation tool. The meeting was a chance for us to look at different rubrics and frameworks that were out there. We spent some time digging into those and the product of that has resulted in a draft of this evaluation framework, which is really great for all the work that we're doing around instructional technology, and that will sort of propel us forward into our May, our May meeting, where we will review the tool and then bring it to a larger audience for their review. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fadjo. Uh, the, the high school orchestra and chorus concert was held on Thursday, the 21st. Um, and at the end of April, our third through eighth graders uh, took the New York State math tests, and yesterday our AP started. So they will go for this week and all of next week. So our high school students are working on their AP exams. Um, Friday, April 29th, I know I wrote about this in my letter, but it was a very busy and exciting um, and engaging day for our students across the district. Uh, BRS had Wellness Day. I was over there in the afternoon. They were uh, trying different water, engaging in uh, mindfulness, playing um, different sports. Uh, I saw people uh, doing headstands, playing basketball, like everything uh, with some of our PACE student athletes. Mm -hmm. So it was nice. really nice. And they did other things during the day. That was just the part that I was able to get to. Um, very uh, nice experience um, facilitated by our um, PTA folks, um, so thank you to them for organizing a meaningful day where the kids would be able to dedicate to learning new strategies that promote wellness. Also on that Friday, the day started with News 12 weather um, being parked outside of, or in our parking lot. Our students were absolutely amazing. They were interviewed on camera. They, we had two students that actually did the weather report. I think um, Mr. Hammer was a little worried that he might lose his job because they were so fabulous. And then they went in our classroom and the students talked with them about what they do with the data from our weather station that is on the very roof of our middle school. So we did also have that uh, link is put on all of our uh, important links. So on the district and the three building sites, 
So um, I didn't get to say this on camera, but I learned about this very early on when I started here in Pleasantville, and I bookmarked the site, and when the weather's a little iffy and I'm thinking about a delay or a closure, I find out what's going on right here on site by going to our weather station. So it's, it's part of my many um, data sources that I look at. So I go right there and I check out what's going on in, um, in Pleasantville. So if you ever want to help me out with that, just know where I'm going for those, uh, for, for those pieces of information. On that same day, our eighth graders um, observed Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uh, one of our middle school, we have two middle school uh, curriculum coordinators. One of the middle school curriculum coordinators created an alternate schedule with a ton of activities and learning experience for the students. And when I asked the students how, what was the day like for them, they had all kinds of mixed different emotions about it, but it was, um, the common theme was that it was very engaging and a great learning experience for them. I think that it brought to light a lot of, um, a lot of history um, that um, in a very realistic way for eighth graders um, that they were really able to take from it and develop a sense of understanding of what people went through um, during the Holocaust. So um, thank our curriculum coordinator for putting together such a meaningful experience for students that day. It was also, I said there was a lot going on that day. It was also the last day uh, the last traditional day for our seniors. They were so excited to start their internships uh, this week, so they started on Monday. There was a wide variety of activities students were engaging in. I asked them all kinds of, what are you doing for your internship? And I was just completely blown away by all the different internships that the students are engaging in. One student was going to work in real estate, another in a veterinarian office, a group was going to create a podcast together. Another was going to evaluate and write about music. And another was going to intern at the hospital. There were really no two experiences that they're engaging in that sound the same. But you know, the common theme of choice, independence, and responsibility as they gear up for their next chapter of going away to school was again a common theme for them, a level of excitement about what they're about to do. And exact, like, you know, when you try to drill down a little bit, so what does that mean? So what are you gonna do? So how are you gonna do that? And that some of them were just like, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, like before you start a new job and you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna go to work. You know, like I'm gonna figure it out when I get there. And that, that in and of itself is such a real life experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's sometimes jumping in when you don't have all the details and you don't know everything. And you know, you're gonna figure it out. So uh, kudos to our seniors that are out there doing internships, taking AP exams and just you know, we have two months left of school. It's just, it's wild to think about. So, uh, great job for them. So we did finish the third marking period. Grades are posted for middle school and high school students on eSchool and families should contact teachers or counselors if they have any questions. Again, we just wanna gear everybody up for success as we enter the home stretch here of the 21-22 uh, school year. We had a COVID ops team meeting today uh, I know many of the board members attended, so thank you. Uh, we really called the meeting because we have uh, a host of recent concerns that have been raised um, from our parents about primarily lunch setup. So we reviewed the physical distancing section of our COVID-19 operating plan, and the administration will continue to explore our best options, and the community should expect communication about our decision in the near future. I just wanted to remind everybody while we're talking about COVID that we still have a lot of test kits that we are very eager to give out to our families. Use them. I know that a lot of folks are suffering from allergy symptoms and you kind of want to be sure and, and um, that it's not COVID and we have test um, kits that can be picked up at district office and each one of the three buildings if any of our staff or families have any need for additional COVID tests. Lastly, and most importantly, um, it is Teacher Appreciation Week. In my four months as superintendent and six total in Pleasantville, every single teacher that I have come to know 
is passionate about the teaching and learning process, cares deeply for our students, and works tirelessly to ensure the total, total success of our students. It is with a tremendous heart and I thank each and every one of them for their dedication and love of learning that they bring to work each day. I know they are enjoying bagels, yoga, food trucks, and more this week due to the shared appreciation we have by the administrators and the PTA and PCA group, uh, PCL, excuse me, groups. So really a lot of thanks go out to our teachers from so many sources um, for all that they do each and every day. Thank you. That is the conclusion. Thank you, Dr. Nassar.